Hey there, my name is Crafty Kathy, and I'm the owner and creator of Kit's Vintage Farmhouse here in Chattanooga, Tennessee. I want to thank you for coming to my channel and spending your time with me today. I would like to ask you for us just to clear our minds. There is so much negativity in this world, and I want my channel to be a place where you can come and escape from it, and we just love each other and have a good time. I also wanted to ask you to hit that little red subscribe button if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet. I would love to have you here. There's always room and we will always have a good time. I won't let you down. This is the channel where you find love, laughs, and DIYs. So anyways, we got high-end vintage inspired home decor for resale and let's jump in. On the first DIY of the day, I'm going to redo this old tray. As you can see, I upcycled this tray a year ago. I was thinking about throwing it away and I thought, man, I just can't do it. I've got to breathe some new life into it. So I took that mirror off the front and you see how filthy it was. I cleaned it up really good. I took it outside and I gave it two coats of my Rust-Oleum two times in the matte white. I even had painted that bottom part white there, and I'm just using my dishwasher Mod Podge, and dishwasher only because that's the only one I grabbed. I mean, really, you can use any Mod Podge. It doesn't matter. And I gave it a real good coat, and I have this beautiful piece of fabric that I got from Walmart last year, and it was just big enough to cover this. It says Paris on it, and it has French writing and roses, and I'm just gonna Mod Podge it on the front of my tray. When you're decoupaging fabric, you want to use a little bit more Mod Podge than you normally would. You don't want it to be goopy and just totally wet, but you want to get enough on there so that fabric's going to stick. And then I use my little brayer to make sure there's no wrinkles or bubbles going on. And then I just went over the top of it and I left it alone for about four hours so it could dry. Then I put that little outer ring back on it, and it had five or six nails that held it together, little finishing nails, and I just put all of those back in. I was so excited because just so happened this is the day that I had got in my shipment of DIY paint, and I'm dying to try this color called Skeleton Key. It's a pretty gray color. Now, I have this little bird, and I made it out of clay the last time I did my IOD molds. It was just left over, and I figured that we're going to use it because I want to see what this bird looks like in gray. So, all it needed was one coat. This paint is so different than anything that you buy in the store. It's clay-based, and it's also very highly pigmented, which means most of the time you only need one coat. Now, I just started using this paint recently, but I will never be able to go back to regular old paint after using this because it's just the best. And a quick tip is use some Vaseline around the rims of your paint when you're closing them up, and that way they're not going to get that old crusty junk in them, and it's hard to open them up. That's just a quick little tip I thought I'd throw in there. I want to keep these paints in pristine condition. So I grabbed my DIY white wax and I put a little bit on my bird. Well, I put a lot of bit on my bird and I just wiped off the excess and it was so beautiful against that skeleton key color. And I'm going to put my bird kind of in the middle but look like he's in flight. I took my tight bond glue, which is what I love to use to get my molds to stick, and I put it all over the bottom, and I just placed him where I wanted to. Now, I wanted to put a word up at the top of this to make it look complete because it didn't look like it was finished to me. And for the life of me, I could not think of any word that seemed to go with it. So in the end, I come up with the word soar because, you know, the bird's soaring. And I thought, okay, that sounds good. And yes, I spelled it right. I didn't spell it like I've got a sore arm. <laughs> the first time that you use these stamps, they're from IOD also. You have to run just a little bit of a... Um, sandpaper over them. It just helps them get a better grip. And I did this in black. And I also have one of those little boards that you can put it on. I think it's called a thin stamp. And it just helps like keep your words 
where they're lined up correctly. And I wanted mine to go like like a rainbow. Do you know what I'm saying? Not directly straight across. So anyways, that's what I come up with. I hope you like this one. On DIY number two, we're going to work on this bread box that I had bought from an older lady that was about to do an estate sale. Now, the first thing that I did after I cleaned it up really good was sand it. And after I sanded it, I put about three coats of shellac on it. Anytime that I do a brown wood, a lighter color than what it is, I go ahead and spray it with shellac. That way it don't turn that old yellowy color. And then I wasted all that time with that work. So look at these beautiful decoupage pictures that my friend Lori sent me from Milton's daughter. I promised myself I was going to be done with the bird DIYs, but this is the prettiest one in the bunch. And I'm going to put it on the front of that bread box door. Now, I have the bread box disassembled at this point because I cleaned all the hinges up. And the way that I'm going to get this decoupage paper on the front of that is just to Mod Podge it like you do anything else when you decoupage. You just put down your Mod Podge, and I put a decent layer down, not as much as for fabric, and then it just sticks right on there. I made sure to go in small sections and I used my brayer to make sure there was no wrinkles or bubbles. But since this is a little bit thicker, there wasn't any wrinkles or bubbles. And as you see, I went in small sections. I always start from the very center is where I start pushing down and then going towards the outside. That way, if there's bubbles, you just push them right off the side. I waited till the Mod Podge was totally dry. And I used a 120 grit sandpaper and I go around the edges. And as you see, I don't go from side to side. I go away from the object that I'm trying to get that off of and it comes right off of there. And then I made sure to go around and seal all those edges up really good with the Mod Podge. And I gave it a very super thin light coat over the top. I left the hinges the color they were because when I cleaned them, they were so beautiful and they're like this brassy color and it just matched that perfect. So I just went ahead and screwed those back on and then I felt like I still wasn't totally done yet. So I'm going to make some molds and I put some cornstarch in my molds. This is my trimmings mold from IOD. And guys, I'm going to leave the link in the description box below. If you buy anything IOD from Milton's daughter, she gives my subscribers 10% off if you use the code CRAFTYCATHY10. And I'll leave all that info I just told you in the description box below. So I just heat the clay up in my hands and I place it in the mold. Now, these make four different molds and so I only needed one but I needed to do it two times to get enough to go across the front of my little bread box. When I finish my mold I always stick it in the freezer for 15 minutes so it'll harden up and it slides out real easy. Then I just use my tight bond glue put it on the back and place it where I want it and that was at the bottom part of my little bread box because the trimmings mold is almost like a border. It would be a good way to describe it. It makes really pretty borders on anything that you're doing. Then I'm gonna use that skeleton key once again, and I'm gonna go over this and paint it with skeleton key, and I let it dry real good. And I finished that off with a little white wax and wiped off the excess. The rest of the DIYs are going to be super quick, but I hope you like this one. Where you will find peace, take a step into the river, get down on your knees, come to the mountain, we'll take it in the view. You will find the life is.
If you're enjoying my video so far, there's a few things I'd like to ask you. If you would, hit the like button because that really helps me out on YouTube. And hey, subscribe! I want you to be a part of my family. I would absolutely love to have you. And there's a bell beside it. When you ring that bell, YouTube's going to let you know every time that I put out a video. But come on and subscribe. And let's go into our next one. I have this basket that I painted white in one of my last videos. And then I have this stencil that says antiques, flea markets, vintage, collectibles. It says all kinds of stuff. And I cut out a small piece of drop cloth. I actually cut a slit in it and then rip it so it gets those pretty edges. And I'm just going to use black acrylic paint and I'm stenciling in the word antiques and collectibles. I'm just going to use a very little bit of my hot glue and just put it on the four corners and I'm going to put that on my basket. And then I take three medium sized buttons that I had purchased at Walmart. They have like roses on them and I'm going to stick those three in the center between those two words. And that's basically all I did to this one besides put some flowers in it. It was really super quick and super cute. The next one is one that I had done at Christmas time and it is a plate holder, like a paper plate holder. And as you see, it has a reindeer on it and it's dark colors. So it's either toss it or redo it. And so I'm gonna redo it to match what I've got going on now. I took it outside and I sprayed it two times with my Rust-Oleum two times matte white. And then I'm gonna take some of the IOD transfers. And these transfers are from the book Ephemeral Melange, the one that has the little seed packets in it that I absolutely love. Now, what I like about their transfers is you don't have to use that whole piece. So in order to make this DIY look right, I'm going to cut off the bottom half and put it on the front part there. And then up at the top, I'm going to put that one single rose. And that way it'll kind of go together and be a little bit more cohesive. Now to get the transfers on, you just take that white backing off of it, lay it down, and then use that little tool that they send with all their transfers, and you just rub it across it. And then when it comes off of there, you just burnish it, and that just means use that film that it just came off of, and you just rub it all over the top of it. It knocks down the shine, and it just helps it stick really well. And then I also added the words that was on this little transfer too. And you don't have to put them in the way that it actually came. You can put it any way you want it and it always looks great. And then, like I said, I added that part to the top. It still didn't look right to me. So I added a couple more words and the date up at the top and then a couple more at the bottom to finish it off. I hope you like this one super easy as a personal preference i like to go over mine with like a 320 grit sandpaper and that way it makes it look a little old and vintagey This next one is just as quick and easy. This is a little shelf that I bought at the thrift store for three bucks. And I think it is so pretty. And it's got that color of wood that we definitely need to make sure that we put the shellac on. So I cleaned it up real good, gave it some shellac, and then I gave it two coats of my Rust-Oleum two times in the matte white. Then when I brought it back inside, I did a little wet distressing on it. And all that is is where you wet your rag a little bit while it's still slightly, it's not damp, but I guess you could say it was kind of tacky. 
and I just wet my rag and went over certain spots that I would want the paint to be pulled up from. And that's all I did on this one. Now the next one is this cute little box that I bought at the Goodwill just the other day for like $2.99. And it had a little plant in it that desperately needed to be cleaned. So I took it out and cleaned it up and I took all the hardware off and I painted the hardware black. A company called Super Clean sent me this cleaner and it's a cleaner and degreaser so I thought we'd give it a try. I put the hardware in it and if you could see when I shook it up it immediately turned brown because it was so dirty and it came out spotless. Now to color my hardware black what I did was put some black paint in a little container and just a little bit of water and I painted the bigger pieces with a brush, but those little tiny screws, I just dropped them down in that black water and then let it dry and it colored it black. I had painted my little box white, of course, because white is what really sells. And I'm gonna use some IOD transfers and I had this little tiny piece of a flower left over. And so I just laid it down and I did the actually I used my fingernail because it didn't need much to get that transfer off and this was a tiny piece of a bird it was basically just the head that was left because I had messed up on it when I first started trying to figure out how to use these so I'm just going to put these two pieces on the front of my little box and I put my plant back in it and that's all I did to this one The last one was the picture of Little Boy Blue that I bought a few weeks ago, and he had a black frame, and I simply just took it apart and painted the frame white, and what a difference a little paint makes. Sometimes that's all it takes. And guys, if y'all stuck with me through this whole video, I just want to thank you and tell you how much I love you and appreciate you, and let's watch some bloopers. Before we get into the bloopers, I must give a quick disclaimer. I would not want to offend anyone by the Bobby Joe character. She is simply a depiction of what people in my family here in Tennessee is like. Just because Bobby Joe's a hillbilly doesn't mean that I think that everyone in Tennessee are hillbillies. However, everyone in my family certainly is. <laughs> so anyways, I do have a cousin named Bobby Joe and my cousins are just like this character. She's only meant to make people laugh and be lighthearted because like I said in the beginning, the world is so full of negativity. I want my channel to be a place where people can come and laugh and be lighthearted. There's many people that have sent me messages that said that it just made them laugh. They were having a bad day until they saw how stupid this character was or how funny she was and it made them giggle. One lady had even just lost her husband, and she said, I haven't laughed in weeks, but that skit was so crazy, I just found myself laughing again. To me, it's worth offending somebody if I can make somebody's day brighter, because that's what I want to do. I want to make people happy. I want to inspire people. So anyway, that's enough of this humbub. Let's get into some Bobby Joe, 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 Joe. <laughs> Because there's more to come, sweet stuff. You know I'm going to be in your next movie. 
I just feel it because it's in the stars. <laughs> Get it? It's in the stars. And since you are a Hollywood star, you are going to be the person to get me out of these hills of Tennessee and bring me to California just like Granny Clampett. That's all I ever wanted. Is that too much to ask? But you won't call me back, Mr. Depp. What is the problem? Okay, okay, okay. I know I come on a little bit strong to some people, but come on. Look at this face and look at this hot body. I mean, uh, really, are you going to skip all of this? Are you still hung up on Amber Turd? Because I'm a whole lot more than that woman could ever be. And if you give me a call, I'll show you what kind of lady that I am. Huh? I know I'm married, Mama. Shut your mouth. We'll just talk about that later, all right? I'm trying to get to Hollywood. Be quiet. No matter what. How I have to get there. I'm not going to get there. Was that recording the whole time? So anyways, I don't understand why his team arrested me. You saw how innocent that was. I do not understand. I even told him that I'd make him some Baina weenies and some spam. But I guess he don't like Baina weenies and spam. I hope he knows what they are. But anyway. I love you guys, and I will be seeing you real soon. I just wanted to let you know what's going on in my world. All right, so I'll talk to you later. Bye. Savvy gets really, really jealous when he doesn't get to be the star of the show. So are you ready to sing our theme song? Okay. We got love and laughs and DIYs. We got some love and laughs and DIYs. We got some love and laughs and DIYs. We got love and laughs and DIYs. Yeah. Woo hoo hoo, baby. Oh, yeah. You're a star, Savvy. Yeah, you're a star. You're a star, you're a star, you're a star, yeah, baby. <laughs> Make a good boy. <laughs>